Agathea Builder of Worlds. This is the second part of a Warhammer Fantasy Battle build. In fact, technically this is a Warhammer Fantasy Battle 6th edition build, but this model would pretty much go, I think, with any iteration of Warhammer from Warhammer in the 1980s, from where I started, Fantasy Battle 2 or 3, all the way up to the last edition, which I can't even remember what number it was, probably 9. Um, but it's also designed to be a uh, pretty versatile model and go with most other systems as well, so it's not going to be bedecked with lots of... Uh, Warhammer skulls and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm going for a, a, a Northern European Renaissance look and we are building, in case you don't know, another pub. This is going to be the Black Dragon Inn and it's being made for Black Dragon Miniatures in Hinckley in Leicestershire. This is where we got to last time. Um, the bottom half is made from XPS foam and is all carved and ready to go. The uh, base is paved and is covered in sand and I have made uh, a rough version of the first floor in foam core which now needs to have windows added to it, it needs to have all the bolts woodwork done to it, it needs to have the archway put in, there's quite a lot to go still on this model. None of the top floor is glued together, it's only pinned together at the moment um, so I've got the actual shape being held all in place so I know it works. I'm going to take this apart uh, and work out where all the windows and things are going to go, cut them all out, put it back together and then actually start getting on with all the balsa wood work as well. Then it's got to have a roof added to it. The roof is going to be uh, well, detachable. I haven't worked out exactly what shape the roof is going to be. Obviously it's going to be kind of this shape, but where the ridge or ridges go, I haven't worked that out yet. Um, and then that'll have to be tiled. I'm going to use pre-cut tiles from war bases um, because there's going to be quite a lot of roof to tile and I want to get on and get this job done as well. I'll then have to add XPS chimneys uh, in three places to this model as well um, and then we'll nearly be done. I must point out at this point I also need to add some jakes somewhere for the patrons to go and do number ones and twos. Uh, as pointed out by my good friend Edward Jackson, thanks Edward, um, that apparently they haven't got anywhere to go at the minute. And these things matter, don't they? Yeah, they do. They totally do. So I'm hoping that this model is going to get finished in this video. Mm, who knows? Uh, there's still quite a lot to go, mind you, so there might be a third video. But I'm aiming for this video to have this model absolutely complete. Not much of this is going to be filmed necessarily in this workshop. I'm filming this at the moment on one of the hottest days of the year. It's face meltingly warm in here um, I'm going to have to find somewhere cooler to work I mean I know some of you live in places around the world that get way hotter than the southeast of England but actually the English this early summer have been moaning and complaining about having sucky weather for the last six to eight weeks or so uh, and now we've finally got some really hot weather we're now all complaining about it being too damn hot so I'm going to have to move somewhere else to make this model before we get on then I'd like to just bend your ear for a moment and ask you to consider joining my Patreon. This channel has been going for about a year now. I've built an awful lot of different scenery and I've got three and a half thousand followers, which I'm constantly surprised about. And recently I've started a Patreon page, actually by request of people who subscribe. Um, and the Patreon uh, deal is such that uh, up to four times a year you stand the chance of winning a Magathea Builder World piece of scenery. Um, do go and check out the whole deal, uh, patreon.com slash Magathea Builder Worlds. The first draw for a piece of Magathea commission scenery is going to be on the 9th of August, so pretty soon now. So if you have signed up to my Patreon before the 9th of August, you have a chance of having one or three goes in that raffle, uh, and I'll be talking to somebody on the 9th or 10th of August, hopefully, about what we're going to make. Brilliant. Okay, let's get on with this build right now, right over here. Come on. Come on, over here. Well, that actually, we're probably not going to go over here. We're going to go somewhere else because I'm bloody melting. <sighs> Caption reads, somewhere cooler. <sighs> First thing I've done then is I've marked on each part of the wall where a chimney's going to go straight up there. And over here too. Like that. Just so I know now, 
I could take this top section off mark on roughly where I want the windows take apart the model, I'm going to label each bit just so I don't make a mess of what's what um, and then I'm going to work out where the windows are going to go also going to cut a couple of extra foam core pieces one or two arches it's going to go in here that will support the main arch I'm not cutting this window out because this actually isn't going to be a window on my original design it's got a dragon here and it's going to have a dragon here as well so this bit is all just going to be solid um, I might have a fake door here and one here but I'm not going to bother putting a room in this section ok so that's all the walls stuck together it's all one solid thing now and the windows cut in now I've got to start the lengthy job which is adding bolster because this is a half timber building it's the point where I'm sitting there thinking I should have done it all in XPS foam and just drawn bricks on it but ready to wield the bolster <laughs> added an extra archway in there because this is all going to be card I need to find some thin card to uh, make the archway there and this is all going to be solid here right let's do it Alright, so this is the uh, box of wood I'm going to be using for the half timber on the in. This is a uh, 3mm sheet. Um, always try and buy your box of wood from a decent model shop, railway model shop, get it online. Don't go to a proper big retailer like Hobby Craft, they'll charge you three times the amount. You get it charged at a railway shop. Um, so, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. Um, we're gonna go upright. Oh, we need a bit here, they're gonna have the dragon in it. Um, and then I've got to do window frames, I'm gonna do window frames and door frames downstairs. Oh god, there's loads of bolts to do. This is gonna take ages. Okay, it's a fairly time consuming job. This because every bit of bolts wood is cut individually to fit. So no pre-measuring as such, I'm cutting each piece separately. Uh, there's a lot of trim to go on. I'm using dressmaking pins again through the bolts wood into the foam core. And they actually paint up quite nicely, you know, and they've got some kind of nail head on, which is pretty neat. Um hold it in place. I've done bottom and top beams first of all, then I'm going to do all the uprights. I'm doing it, I'm using the ruler to cut it but I'm not measuring as such. They're roughly seven millimeters thick and they're then cut to length. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use this, I'm using this three mil bolster here. I'm probably going to use, uh, might use that or slightly thinner to do the window frames and bits and pieces. Then I'm going to use some really thin bolster to do the floor. Um, so we're nearly there. The arch is the only thing that's causing me problems because I don't know whether to cut that into bolster or not. Or I might just ignore that and just cut straight bits and have that. I'll see what it looks like. Cutting bolster into curves is a bit of a pain in the neck to be honest. But as you can see I've got a bit here to go and these bits around the top. Here. And then we're going to do the uprights. Well, we're making pretty good progress here now. I've got all of the horizontal beams on all the way around including inside the tunnel here the archway now I'm doing vertical beams in the middle the most of those are done uh, normally I'd put one here but there's going to be a chimney going up there so I don't need one I'm going to put some uh, angled ones now in these corners I think then the next thing I'll have to do is cut all the frames to the windows it takes a little while I have cut a shelf here it's going to go over the archway because that is going to hold the black dragon I have a dragon sat on there I'm going to use a dragon from the mighty empire set I've still got a few left it's a dragon it'll be black it'll be cool it might not be quite as big as that I um, bought it with me so I don't know how big it is uh, which is a pain in the neck so that's what I've cut out so far but I might not use that I might make it smaller so next angles 
on the corners. Uh, see how that works out. It's a six mil wide strip of balsam wood. I'm literally gonna, I'm gonna do this by eye. What I tend to do is light on like that, and then I'm gonna take my scalpel and make sure I just cut it the angles right so it fits across a, a cross beam. <coughs> I could put, I'm almost tempted to put a wooden beam all the way across here, but there's only one window to support, so uh, I think I'm probably not gonna, I'm just gonna put that corner in there. I'm not gonna put corners on every uh, joint. I might put another straight beam underneath these windows. I am not a timber framing expert. And to any timber framers out there, and I do actually know some timber framers, not that I know they'll be watching this or not, um, but to any timber framers, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. To everybody else, it's just gonna be a bunch of wood stuck on cardboard model. It's gonna look pretty cool. That's the way it works. Ah. Right, keep going. It's a lot of work, this balsam wood, you know? It's damn fiddly too. Although, I think it's got to be sixes and sevens, or apples or oranges, or swings and roundabouts, whether it's less fiddly or more fiddly than doing it in XPS foam. I've always done it this way, so I'm gonna keep doing it this way. Okay, so the first floor now has got uh, balsam window frames in every window. Um, and I've added the chimneys in three places so they line up with the chimneys on the ground floor I've added an extra arch in the archway here so I'm going to put cardboard in here to make the arch and the next job after that will be to fill and put wooden floors into each of the rooms and to do that I'm going to use so look, 0 0.8 millimeter bolts of wood. Now in some cases this is really cool because it has to be exactly the same width <coughs> as the bolts. Uh, this room over here, I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit. I'll draw wooden planking in uh, and then um, I will be able to make those uh, planks. They'll be easy. I'm not cutting them individually. It's just going to be scribed into the wood. Uh, and I'll probably have to cut out the holes for the staircases. Then that'll be the first floor complete. And then the next job will be to work out how on earth I'm gonna make the roof. But let's get the floor complete first of all. All right, so this is the first floor of the building. Pretty much done. Wooden windows, uh, wooden floors, chimneys in place, archway stuck in all the way there. Not that this is uh, um, advertised at all. Or sponsored, I just drink a lot of stuff. I'll trim up the old bit that's sticking out. Um, oh, the other thing I've got to do is put the front on, put the dragon on the front here. The black dragon. He's going to sit like that over the archway. That's going to be pretty neat. Um, but then, otherwise, the first floor is done. It sits nicely on the ground floor, lines up, chimneys line up nice. Um, oh, I haven't got cut out the holes for the stairs, but that'll be easy enough to do. So that lines up nicely, um, and I'm ready to think about making the roof. I got asked recently whether I'm going to magnetise this bit to the other bit, and I'm not. I'm going to put some lugs down here to hold this in place so it sits nicely on the model, and that's all it really needs. It doesn't need magnets. Um, so I'm thinking of putting a roof that's going to be one piece over here um, which would give potential to have rooms in the loft but I'm not going to do rooms in the loft that's just too damn fiddly um, and then I might have a separate roof over the bit at the back because that's kind of like an extension we've got added later and then I also need to roof the stable that's here I'm going to use uh, wall bases tiles I think to make the roof um, and then it will be ready to seal and paint so yeah we're doing really good I'm really pleased okay so now I'm experimenting with roof shapes I've drawn my first shape on here uh, clearly you can see that now uh, it's going to have an inch of wall and then 
It's going to be a five inches tall on the roof. It could possibly go higher, but it's going to make the model really, 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 really tall. I might take it up another inch and see what that looks like. Then I'm going to cut it out. Uh, in fact, what I might do is draw in the other inch on another angle and then cut that out and then I'll have both lines to look at at the same time. Actually, that's quite a good idea. Sometimes I'm not so stupid, am I? Mm. Let's do that. Okay, so I've cut out this roof section and I've put three different roof lines on it. Um, this is one possibility, you have one great big roof for this model. It's going to be a hell of a lot of tiles. Um, it's also doing my heading because this central line here doesn't match up with this line I've drawn in over the middle of the arch, but that doesn't matter because this is not a symmetrical building. I just can't decide. I could lower it down like this. Still an enormous, enormous roof. I could possibly put two roofs one here, one here, and that could run all the way back down the length there. Um, I could possibly put it this way around. That would give me one great big roof and then a bit here. The roof is actually giving me a bit of a headache. I'm not quite sure what to do. If I have this one here like this, back this will give me enough roof here to put another one up here on this bit just over here that would work but then so would have one long roof running all the way down there um, I'm almost tempted to have several smaller different size shape roofs because this is um Yeah, the original building maybe had one long build down here, so that could be a roof that runs all the way down there. That would be all right. Then this one could have been one that's run forwards, <coughs> and that would they would make. I could maybe put a roof in, in between the two. I don't like the idea of this enormous roof. It's just too damn big for the model. I think it would look really, really odd. I mean, there's bloody loads of room up there for loads of other rooms so I think I'm going to try a different plan and do a roof on here and then a roof either on all of that that might work um, they can be different heights and different shapes in. But yeah I'm dumping this this is the final roof design I've just gone for two parallel gable ended roofs uh, the one on the right goes over the arch and this side here. Got an extra inch of wall which will give room space above the arch. I'm going to put probably a dormer window in here. Um, I could possibly put, I might put the odd window in here. What I'll probably do is build them into the um, frame in the model but not actually cut them out. I'm not going to bother putting a room in there because that whole roof section will just lift off. And this whole roof section will just lift off as well. Um, and now I need to do the wooden frame, timber framing on both of these to make them work. And then I've got to tile the roofs and do the chimneys. Chimneys I'm going to attach to the roofs so they uh, are all one piece. Um, which would have been cleverer than this one, which I've gone and cut out of the damn thing. So I'm going to end up having a whole chimney. I'm going to re stick a whole chimney through there so that'll fit on, sit in place. I think. Um, I'll let all the new tiles from warbases.com because I haven't got enough. I don't think I'm going to start tiling these roofs as soon as I can. And hopefully the new tiles will turn up when I'm halfway through the project. But uh, timber on the roof sections, first of all, front here and on the back, of course. So this is what it looks like in the back of the model, uh, which is quite nice, that works quite well. So this all needs timber on it too. 
Uh, so that's the next job. Let's do it. Well, here's a classic example of not thinking it through and not looking carefully at what you're doing. Well done me. Can anybody spot the deliberate mistake with the woodwork on the gable end of the roof? Can we kids? Can we see the deliberate mistake? Yes we can, because it's supposed to be a chimney in there. So all that time, cutting all that into shape, fitting all that in the roof, what it actually needs is some XPS foam and a bloody chimney stuck on there. Grrr. 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 Oh well. Peeling that bit off then, aren't I? Ain't gonna stick a chimney on instead. Mm -mm. There we go then. Check this out. Ooh. Chimney. 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 Stuck out, cut. More XPS foam, more scribe brickwork. All there, sitting nicely, nicely. All going on good. Like the Rebel One Abbey build, I'm using war bases, pre cut, laser cut, rooftop for this model. They look pretty nice. Quite a cost effective way of tiling, decent sized tiles. Um, they come like this. Just had a whole load of arrive because I need to tile all of this roof section. And uh, they are pretty straightforward to apply. This is a very big piece of roof, mind you. So uh, what we do is we take our set of roof tiles, take them out of the plastic wallet. I'm going to cut these out and we're going to stick them on. Let's show you how that works. Um, I'll just take this one roof section, don't need the rest of the model. Open them up out of the packet and you get this burnt, this laser burnt smell. <sighs> uh, we're going to stick these on, I'm going to tile this side and then I'm going to do the other side which is a bit fiddly around the chimney. But Everything will then be done with the model apart from the texturing on the foam core which I'm going to do with filler and then we are ready to paint. So. This model is very much nearing completion. Good stuff. Are you to go? Okay, so you who glue across the bottom on the cardboard. Yeah. Now she does it. Strip of tiles. Now you have to be careful with these because they've got two textures. There's a definite kind of completely smooth surface and a rough surface. I like the rough surface to be on the outside. And all I'm doing is placing them over and on, making sure they hang over the bottom edge on this side. Although not too far because this is the inside of the model and I don't want to cause problems. Where it sits on the top wall. And now I'm taking this other end and I'm going to just stick it on. I will trim away a load in a few minutes. There we go. That's a set of tiles on. PDQ, pretty damn quick. Run a bead of glue along the top. And on the cardboard. Stick on the next row, step it so they overlap a little. That way, they're obviously like bricks, they have to kind of like merge together. This way, I get far more variation. Stick that on there. job as this says again two rows going for a third row there is no way I could stick on individual tiles this quick and individual tiles will be bigger 
So the advantages to using these tiles is they're a smaller, more regular kind of size, a bit more mass produced, which is fine. And uh, they go on quick. They're not quite as unique looking as individual cut tiles. The individual cut tiles are bigger than right? more like shingles really. Um, but actually for, a f for effect they look pretty damn good. I like them a lot. Well worth it. Two quid a sheet which actually can be a little bit pricey. Um, especially if you're doing a big roof like this. But I think that's worth it for the amount of time it saves, which is frankly loads. But even though it's going to go on real quick, I'm not going to make you watch me tiling all of this because that would be beyond tedious and you must have seen me tile quite a few roofs by now if you're a regular on this channel and if you're not a regular on this channel why the hell aren't you you know frankly you should be if you're not regular go subscribe make sure you do if you want to keep me in my habit of roof tiles then do please consider signing up to my Patreon page. Thank you for this public service announcement. Come back and see me when I've got a few more tiles on this roof. Hurrah, go me. That is the entire roof tiled. It looks pretty good, I'm quite pleased with that. Now, the next thing I'd wanna do is texture all the phone call. But it's about quarter past two in the morning and I haven't got the right stuff with me. So the only other job I can do this evening is wield the Mod Podge. And a big brush. And I'm going to seal all of the XPS foam so it's ready to paint. And I'm probably going to mix a bunch of uh, acrylic painting with it. So it primes it at the same time. So, that's what we're going to do. I don't think you need to watch me painting glue onto polystyrene. That sounds a bit dull. The model is completely made. Um, I've sealed the XPS foam. We can see that's done. It's white because I used the white acrylic in with the Mod Podge that painted that. So it's done. But now the foam core surfaces that I made the first floor on the roof out of is very very smooth and needs some texture on it. So I'm going to make a mix of powdered polyfiller and Mod Podge. Uh, I'm going to mix that up probably with a little bit of water as well. I'm going to paint all the foam board surfaces inside and out then that will give me a texture of paint. Um, it will also help me do things like fill the gaps here around the archway front and back and cover anything that I've scored into with pens or whatever so this will all fill in here okay as I said before this is definitely one of my favorite parts of making models now it's all black it's all the same color primed textured ready for a paint job that's the final stage of that I've got some separate bits The black dragon, there we are, it's going to go on the front, it's uh, separate at the minute, there it is, because that's going to go on here, but I want to paint the wall that's behind it, so that's going to be, and then all the doors, the doors are all separate too, and that one, because I could drop it on the freaking floor, right. Let's get on with the paint job. First decision you've got to make is it going to go red brick down below, down here, light rebel wabby or grey? Hmm, I wonder. I could even ask the client. Okay, now the light in here this evening is terrible to the video by, but 
we are going for grey stone work because that's what the client would like grey on the ground floor and on the chimneys um, I'll make the paving slightly different and the roof will have red clay tiles but that's what we're going for so first coat then is uh, Adeptus Mechanicus uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey then I'm going to get light from there probably three or four dry brushes different colours um, and uh, we'll go from there it should be a pretty relatively quick uh, paint job because it's mostly dry brushing on decent surfaces that will give us a uh, texture to dry brush onto so hopefully it shouldn't be too complicated to paint that could be famous last words you never know layer 2 then Dawnstone Dawnstone done that need a third layer excited isn't it okay so here I am back in my own workshop nice to be back um, to get this model finished this is where I'm at um, since I started painting most of the paintwork as you can see has been done I've mounted the black dragon on the front uh, it's quite a neat paint job um, interiors are done fairly plain but they're all there too um, and what this really now needs is some finishing detail a bit more weathering um, some more foliage on it and a couple of items one thing I haven't noticed completely is you could do with chimney pots and to achieve chimney pots I'm going to be using matte pins like this a couple of good reasons a good shape B easy to paint C pin helps it really go into the through the top and into the foam help stick it in place it will get stuck on as well so we're going to put chimneys on uh, and the odd little sign the odd thing that's going to make it a bit war hammery but I don't want it to be too war hammery I'm going to rely on the figures that will get used around it to make it look like a proper war hammer piece of terrain but then if you change that and take things off and change the kind of set decoration then you get a World War 2 piece of scenery or a English Civil War piece of scenery or something similar so I'm very nearly finished with this hang on just a few minutes and let's see how this model turns out okay so I've already added a few stick on tufts of grass these are pico tufts of grass I'm also going to add some uh, clump foliage which is just what I've got left here uh, woodland scenics clump foliage medium green and all I'm going to literally do is take my Yoohoo all purpose adhesive splat some glue on in places and stick some clump foliage along the bottom of the wall uh, then in places I'm going to add a bit of green mid green flock as well um, I don't know what kind of battlefields this model is going to get used on so I want it to kind of like blend with a number of different possibilities really so and this this is pretty cool this is quite effective because it's literally only take little bits of the clump foliage and if it's too big you just tear it but you literally oh yeah, it's quite nice so we, and I'm just going to stick that on just gives little bushes and shrubs around the base of the wall helps to take some of the harsh lines away and add a bit of colour because the colour palette on this model is quite limited greys and browns and blacks and whites so uh, the foliage helps to add just that splash of colour which is quite quite nice so there's some more around the back here and I might find the odd flowering plant as well but I don't want too much I'm going to put a couple of bits inside the yard as well just down in the corner somewhere or I might put some on the wall use a different uh, colour and grade of turf of foliage and that will give me maybe some what's it called ivy let's have a look let's see if I can find a different lot all right so this is underbrush olive green different colour and all I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to think I'm going to run some up this wall so again I'm taking my glue and I'm just going to draw a string of glue across the surface the surface should be fine because it's been sealed and primed and painted so I shouldn't damage it with this album base glue but this way here I'm just going to run strings of glue across there like their branches all across the wall up and around and underneath the window there 
plenty of it down on the floor here. Then I'm going to upend it over a pouring tray. And I'm going to scatter this flock on it. some plant glowing up the side wall. Give that a blow because there's too much there in a minute. Always make a mess with this but there we are. There we go. Plant growing on the wall that looks quite nice. That would look quite good. Again it gives us a, just a, a different splodge of colour. Something else to look at which is quite nice. Don't need to do too much. I'm going to run some just around the base of the stable in the yard here and along this back wall. So, again, I'm going to take my tube of glue, a few spots of glue, one over there, get the roof out of the way, and down here as well in the corners. Well, they don't pay as much attention. Curl it up. Flock in there. Peel it out. Stick it over the other side. And that will probably do. From a foliage point of view. Pick that up, turn it upside down. Close the door. Covered in flock now. Well done, mate. Okay, so I haven't wanted to add loads of furniture, but uh, back here in the kitchen, I have added a, a 3D resin printed uh, kitchen range and a set of shelves, and I might put just the odd thing in the bar. I don't want loads though, because again, it's going to get in the way of gameplay. But I think that's looking quite nice. The whole model's got removable bolts of doors. Well, I've made those mostly, so Gary, the owner, will have the challenge of kind of like holding on to them and not losing the damn thing. Right, so that's pretty much all the foliage. I might actually run a little bit along here. I've got to do some, I'm going to use some uh, wood and scenics mid green, actual coarse turf flock now. Uh, and uh, in places on the edge of the board as well. Um, so, uh, but I might apply that with some more podge and a brush. Okay, so here's the base of the model. Pretty much done. Uh, painted flocked. You can see in the ground floor, uh, the rooms are. I've got a kind of sandstony um, paving stone all the way through, and the walls are painted with a. They're painted Morgoth bone and then wraith bone on top of that. So kind of a whitewash. Grey there looks quite nice. I think that will sit on most tables quite nicely. Um, and then when we have the first floor. That's alright, I've, I've done some weathering with the paint, the paint work was, again, um, more glass bone, had Corax and then been weathered it with a bit of a Agrax earth shade. And inside, again, same same simple paint job. I haven't done anything in this middle section here because effectively there's no room to put in there. They could have a door added on either side, but that's just a void really above the um, archway. And uh, then... To, I've got the two separate roof sections which I'm now going to make chimney pots for using those mat pins so they come off separately that frames the black dragon here quite nicely pleased with that and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some flock to some of the roof weather the roof a little bit because it's very very clean and it needs moss and that kind of thing on the top but then uh, we're nearly there cool. so this is a Warhammer piece of terrain and this is a Sigma right comet with a skull and things to give it a top. This is gonna be the bit that says, Hey, Warhammer! I'm gonna mount it just on the front of here, and it'll probably get broken off in the front first game. But hey, yeah, nothing says Warhammer more than twin tail comets and skulls. <laughs> I'm very happy with how the chimney's turned out. The uh Matte pins, push pins work really well. That's just a really simple paint job with a black centre. They make nice chimney pots on top of those chimney stacks. They look pretty good. So there we go. That's the uh, fully finished 
Warhammer Inn. Uh, it's the first Warhammer piece of scenery I've made for many years, straight up Warhammer Fantasy Belt, and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it really looks the part. It's going to make a nice centerpiece on a table. There's quite a lot of room to work around it. You're not going to get great big regiments of troops in it, but skirmishes and small units will occupy it really nicely. And for skirmishy games, it'll be absolutely perfect. It will also be absolutely perfect for other skirmish games going forward. Um, in the bit at the end, I'm going to put some other figures on it just so you can see what it looks like maybe with other stuff because it all looks it looks pretty cool. I'm very happy with it. I like the degree of detail. Um, not too much, not massively overly cluttered, which is what I tend to do with a lot of my scenery um, when I'm making it for myself. That's because then I can pack it and it doesn't travel and all that kind of thing. But if you overclutter a piece of scenery, A, it's a pain to paint, and B, it's a pain to store and then play with as well. So and I want this building to come apart and be used on the tabletop. So, uh, Gary at Black Dragon, thanks very much for the opportunity to make this. Uh, I'm looking forward to making other Warhammer scenery for uh, folk when we go. Um, if you... Uh, uh, are interested in a piece of scenery this size um, I'm probably going to be making one for one of my patrons pretty soon the first draw on my patreon page for a Magrathia Builder World's piece of scenery is going to be at the beginning of next week the 9th of August um, you still got time to sign up go check out the link down below um, and that way there you might win a foot square piece of scenery uh, for any system you like it doesn't have to be Warhammer it could be Necromunda it could be 40k it could be bolt action it could be Malifaux uh, your choice I don't mind, it'd be great fun. In fact, if it's a different system that I haven't built something for, that would be an interesting thing for my channel. Um, so, it's been uh, good fun building this one. Uh, lots of different materials, lots of different challenges, and uh, I think that this could be the first of a number of Warhammer buildings, whether for Fantasy Battle or Age of Sigma. We'll have to see. If you don't want to miss it, then make sure you subscribe. If you can, and you've liked and enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this model and what else I could build for Warhammer or other stuff, because I'm always interested to hear your opinions. Apart from that, thanks for watching. See you next time on Magathea Builder Wars.